Boys and girls, um, today we're going to talk about the water cycle. And um, we have talked about the water cycle a little bit, and I think you're a little familiar with it from years past. But um, today we're going to talk about the parts of the water cycle and um, how they all work together. So one very interesting thing that I think is really amazing is the water that we're drinking today is the same water that has existed since the world began. It is recycled over and over again in a process called the water cycle. So think about it. When dinosaurs were here, we still have that same water. And you're gonna see how in a few minutes because the water cycle continues to use the same water over and over in different ways. And we're going to see that in just a minute. Um, so sometimes you'll hear the water cycle called the hydrologic cycle. Hydro means water. And it is the journey that water takes as it circulates, making this you know, constant up and down from the land to the sky and back again. So there are many stages of the water cycle and we're gonna talk about each one. So you can see them here on this picture. We have evaporation and transpiration. So that's kind of where that water, you know, seems like it's going away. Condensation, we we refer a lot of that to um, like when we're drinking a drink and it gets condensation on the outside and we're going to talk about what that's meaning. Precipitation that we've discussed already, you know, falling from the sky, water falling from the sky in some, in some form, snow, sleet, rain, runoff. So, you know, that's kind of exactly what it's saying, you know, where it's running off of something else. And then collection, where it gathers up. Um, in our picture, we see that percolation, where it's getting down into the ground. Now, the sun is the energy source that drives the water cycle. We've talked about how, you know, the sun affects so many things. The sun is, is um, what affects our weather, um, and how it feels that, un, you know, the, the heating of our earth and that causes wind and our weather. And so the, the driving force of the water cycle is the sun. And that's because of this first thing, evaporation. So we can see in our picture, we have our sun, which is giving off that heat energy. All right. So in this case, it's hitting that, the ocean. At the top, the, the, the ocean surface is, is warmer. And so the water is evaporating. It's rising into the sky. You've noticed that if you've ever had a puddle of water outside, the sun shines on it and it disappears. That's evaporation. You know, we don't see it rising towards the sky necessarily, but we... Um, but that is what's happening. So I have a little video for you to see. Welcome to Plum Landing. Evaporation Station. We're on a mission for Plum. We want to show Plum what happens after you paint with water. I'm painting a cat. All the stuff that we're painting with water is evaporating. It's a pretty sunny day. Perfect for evaporation. We've noticed as we paint on the ground that it starts to evaporate in the sun. Now it's been five minutes and the fish is almost totally evaporated. We painted some shapes with water and traced them with chalk. Now, when they evaporate, it's easy to see the original shape we painted. Water is a liquid and the sun turns it into water vapor, which is a gas. Then the water vapor goes up into the clouds and then from the clouds, it like rains back down. I'm going to do an experiment to show what happens when water evaporates. I'm going to make 
a handprint on a piece of construction paper and put that one in the sun. And then I'm going to make another handprint and put that in a plastic bag. Now we're just gonna wait to see what the sun does. It's been about five minutes and the one that was just in the sun, the water's just gone. It's already been evaporated. The one in the plastic bag, I see little water droplets on the plastic bag. It's almost as though the water vapor has been caught in a net that's the plastic bag. I'm comparing two different surfaces. I'm going to paint water on metal and cement. The metal feels warmer to me. The water on the metal seems to evaporate faster. Maybe it's hotter. I am painting a sun in the sun and a sun in the shade and I'm going to see which one evaporates faster. It's been about five minutes and the one in the sun is almost gone, but the one in the shade is still as wet as ever. Now it's been 10 minutes and the one in the sun has now totally evaporated, but the one in the shade is still trying to evaporate. I think that the heat has something to do with this because um, it's cooler in the shade and the one in the shade isn't evaporating as fast as the one in the sun. Explore your world and then tell Plum about it at the Plum Landing site at pbskids.org. Okay, very cool. So um, we're going to try and do some of those while you guys are at home. I wish we were all here, but um, that should be something that we can... Uh, I'll try and um, maybe we can do that um, on a Google Meet. We can all maybe go outside if, if we can or um, just kind of watch and see what happens. I think that would be fun. So one thing that I hope you noticed in that was as that water was evaporating off the sidewalk uh, and the paper, we didn't see it go anywhere. But when they did it inside of that bag, you saw that it really was evaporating. You could see that there really was water in there, which I think is so interesting. Um, and it helps us to realize, oh, it, it's not really, it's not somebody just, my teacher's not just telling me this happens. I'm seeing this happen. All right. And that leads me to transpiration. So um, we have, You've probably heard people say that we get oxygen from our trees and, um, you know, we, that is true. And our trees are also lit doing transpiration. It's a, that water is evaporating off the leaves of trees and plants. So in this picture, and we did this at school last year, you guys may remember seeing this in the trees we had in the courtyard, but we covered up some of our leaves now. It wasn't that these leaves were covered in water or anything like that. We didn't cut into them or anything. They just naturally release water. And so you can see that in that bag, that that's just something that naturally happens. So, so cool. Okay, next we're going to talk about condensation. Water vapor in the air gets cold and changes back into liquid water droplets into the air. All right, so once our water has evaporated, it evaporates and it goes up into the clouds and creates, uh, and then that's when you have that, that condensation happen. Condensation is the creation of those clouds. It's that water vapor going into the air, changing back into the, um, the water, water droplets, and that's all the cloud is. And so let's see what Bill Nye has to say. Science guy. Hey, I'm in here. Uh, I'm in this giant freezer. Now, uh, let's see what happens when I come outside where you are. See, the surface of my uh, bubble of helmet of science turns cloudy. That's because water vapor, which was floating around in the air, uh, sticks to the cold surface in little liquid water droplets. Now, this process, uh, this effect, this thing that happens is called condensation. It's the same thing that happens to people who wear glasses when they come in after being outside on a cold day. It's where clouds come from. Where'd you guys go? Oh, funny. Oh, very funny. 
Anyway, uh, condensation is sort of the opposite of evaporation. Instead of liquid water gaining energy and becoming a vapor, water vapor loses energy and becomes a liquid. Little tiny droplets that stick to cold surfaces. It's a very important thing about condensation. Water vapor needs a place to stick in order for condensation to happen. Look at the glass next time you drink your milk. Does it seem to sweat? Well, the glass isn't really sweating, of course, but it is wet. It's just the water vapor in the nearby air being condensed. When clouds form, water vapor turns into tiny liquid water drops. But in order for that to happen, the water has to have some place to stick. It has to have something to stick to. So take a look at this. This is our big glass jug cloud apparatus of science. And we're going to make a cloud in here. First, we'll add a little water. This will be the water that will form our cloud. Just swirling it around a little. There. Now, using this pump, we'll pressurize the big glass jug. Then when I pull this rubber stopper off, the air in the jug will expand. And that's when a cloud should form. Three, two, one. See, uh, nothing happened. That's because the water vapor didn't have anything to stick to. So what we're going to do is add some dust, just a tiny amount of dust. And to make the dust, we'll use the smoke from these two matches. That's all the dust we need to form a cloud. Now watch. We'll pressurize it again. When I pull it off, the air in the jug expands. And when it expands, it cools off. The same thing happens to air masses when they get blown around by the wind and pushed up high into the sky. Three, two, one. See? It's a cloud. It's the water cycle. It's science. <laughs> Very cool. All right. So next time you're um, drinking a drink and you've got your water vapor your condensation on it just tell your family oh that's just some water vapor all right let's watch this video on condensation Very cool. Okay. So we've seen that happen before, I'm sure. All right. Next is precipitation. We talked about this last week. This is just whatever form of water that falls to the Earth's surface. Um, and this is so much water has condensed. So much water has gathered up that they become very heavy and they have to fall down. And whatever temperature the air is depends on what kind of precipitation you get. All right. Runoff. When the precipitation falls to the earth, it's going to flow to some collection point. Of course, gravity is pulling that water down. Okay, some of it's going to do some filtration and it's going to go down into, um, into the ground. You've probably noticed that before on really dry times. It rains a lot and it just like disappears. It sinks down into the ground sometimes. Or if there is a place, a hill or something, uh, you may notice ditches and, and things like that that get filled up with water. Okay, so um, there is that. Next, you have collection. When it falls, it collects in lots of different places. Oceans, lakes, icebergs, puddles, rivers, streams. We see it all over the place where it can collect. All right, so here's another picture that you can look at and kind of see that water cycle. Um, this is a wrap about the water cycle that's 
pretty funny. We can watch it. You should know that it all starts with the sun. Evaporated oceans and lakes. We're here to tell you about Ray, Ray. The water cycle makes it Ray, Ray. Evaporation makes it Ray, Ray. Condensation makes it Ray, Ray. Sun is the ocean molecules go round and round. Throw my back they begin to jump up and down. Become water vapor flying up to the sky. Get together from a cloud. My oh my. I'm talking about condensation. You know it's fine. see our vocabulary and uh, you also have a, a copy of your vocabulary for this so you can refer back to it all right and so that is a quick lesson on the water cycle <laughs> 